Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, channel leaders, welcome to Tommy Talk. My name is Juan. This is my original comic partner, Anthony. It's a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So, Anthony, how are you doing today? I should ask you that question first. <laughs> you should ask me that question first. All right, you ask me. You go. Yeah. Your turn. How's your How's your day going, Juan? Ah, it's been great. You know, <laughs> I slept on the floor last night. You know, why did you, uh, sleep, why'd you sleep on the floor? <laughs> your Your back? No, it's kind of weird. Like sometimes my neck bothers me. Sleep mm-hmm. in my bed hurts it but it's weird when i sleep on the floor i don't know if it straightens it out or something what but it hurts uh-huh. less in the morning i'm not just sleeping like on just a hardwood floor at my house i have like <laughs> i have two uh, latinos out there i got two mexican blankets i laid down on the floor as my cushion <laughs> so i i never had neck problems really but um sometimes in, in bjj or something like neck cranks me or something my neck is sore for for a lot of times so i have to use massage gun but mm-hmm. i started i started spending more on pillows I don't know. I think I told you about this, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because every, all the time I end up having to stack two or three pillows together because they sink a lot. So I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? Given how often I have to replace the pillows and I have to buy two or three to stack them together, mm-hmm. I, might as, I might as well try a, a more expensive pillow because I see like there's Casper, there's Purple, there's... um. <laughs> What is that called? Tough and needle. Like uh-huh. th- there's some more, some more expensive pillows out there. They're like ranging from between 60 to a hundred dollars for a king mm-hmm. size pillow. Cause I have a king size bed. Obviously it's yeah. uh, cheaper if you get a, a queen <laughs> size one, but I bought, so I, I narrowed it down to two, which was Casper uh-huh. and uh tough and needle. Uh-huh. So one is a one is a foam one, so it's a lot of support. I actually kind of liked it, but it was a little too much support for me, and I like to have a little bit of softness to my pillow. Mm-hmm. And the other one's Casper, and you can buy it online or you can buy it from Target, which is what I did. Was like, if I need to return it, I can just like drive back there. Yeah. So the Casper one, they make different ones, but the one I got was a pillow within a pillow. A so pillow they, within a pillow. Yeah. So the so inside. The inside is like a really stiff support pillow, and then the outside is like a soft, fluffy one. So then you all get right. you kind of get the support, so it doesn't is sink. It, is it all foam, or is it like foam on the inside? No, and it's not foam. It's, it's down. It's down alternative. Down like they just stuff. Yeah, they just stuff that more station. <laughs> they just stuff more stuff into it. And uh-huh. what I also like about it is you can unzip the outer side, and um, you know how the outside gets all nasty and stuff with like dead yeah. skin, yeah. your skin and. In some one of these cases, wash your yeah. pillows, people. Wash you don't your think pillow, about me. Wash, wash your pillows. pillows. All right. Yeah. Wash if you, pillows, if you get <laughs> if you get like breakouts on your face, especially I have really sensitive. I have eczema and stuff like that. So training judo, like the gi rubbing against my face, I already get like rashes and stuff everywhere. Um, but wash I can wash that pillow easy easily by just unzipping the outside case and then letting it dry. I don't have to like. I've tried washing my older pillows, like the cheap one, but when mm. you take it out, it's all like disconfigured. Like it's <laughs> clumps of clumps of stuff focused yeah. in one place. And it's never the same anymore, but yeah. I just wash, I wash this pillow regularly and you can just wash the outer case and it's fine. So, mm-hmm. um, I ended up returning the tough and pill, uh, tough and pill, <laughs> tough, tough and needle one because Do you it was a little in it? <laughs> yeah, so it, they, both of them give you like a hundred ninety day or a hundred days to test it out, and it's like no, um, you can return it for free basically. Uh, what ended up happening was because we're in the midst of COVID, they didn't accept my return, and they told me to donate it and show them a receipt of the donation. But I told them like, well, I don't feel safe going to the, like Goodwill right now to donate it. I, this is like back in April and then do like, oh just give it to a friend then so i gave it i gave it to kevin <laughs> i was like, oh, give it to kevin i gave it to kevin here, here, he, he donate loves to it. You. i was like here here's a hundred dollar pillow that's like for free <laughs> i should great. ask him it's been a while so i should ask him how how's it holding up how do you like it All right um but yeah my neck is much better so uh i guess this is kind of related to judo like if you don't get a good night's sleep if you have neck problems mm-hmm. just like get try out that pillow because like p- <laughs> the cheap king size pillows are like what ten ten dollars and if you have to replace them like every or stack them up then it's like what twenty thirty dollars for three pillows mm-hmm. and then 
if you were to replace them like two or three times a year, that's already almost the price of like a nice pillow. Two or three and times I, a year, freak! I keep the pillow for like decades. I don't know that's how long how I you keep get my pillows sick. For. And it's just people don't understand how I nasty their pillows, pillows are. Okay, I wash. People my don't understand shit. how nasty their pillows are because I bet you how many people here that are listening don't wash their pillow every month or every other month. You know. Well, it's funny because growing up, like we didn't get like fancy pills. We get these like uh, mm-hmm. Latinos would know me when I talk about this. We get these like flea market pills or like these like brick of yeah. a thick pillow you get. <laughs> and over time it gets softer. So it's more cushiony <laughs> and stuff. When you first get this, like this flea market brick po- <laughs> brick thing, it's just like you try to lay down. It's like, oh, like I swear to God, I'm trying to lay down and my neck is at like a 45 degree angle facing upwards or something. <laughs> like but hey. now, like I have these like, um, Mm-hmm. nicer thinner pillows for me like i like these little thinner ones because my neck i like to lay flatter that's just i noticed that that helped my neck more when i lay flat where my wife has like her she has like double triple stack pillows inside one case so she had now has see, a so see, she's pillow. doing that too <laughs> yeah so if you need that much support then i would totally recommend trying out the tough and pillow well now i know what to get her for her birthday when's her birthday tell me tell me after afterwards <laughs> um well, you know what's funny a pillow that i always wanted to try but i never because i've I always want to try it. Do you remember those buckwheat pillows that came out like 10, yes. 15 years ago? Yes. So I used to have one when I lived in Hong Kong. Yeah. You know, why, you, you know why it's popular in Asia, right? Because it it's nice. cool. No, it's cool. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's pillow. cooling. Oh, yeah. Because so the leather jacket has a pompadour, wears sunglasses. <laughs> no, it's a really cool pillow. No, because <laughs> it's so hot in the summer and a lot of like my, my house had an AC, but my mom being cheap, like doesn't want to <laughs> turn on the AC unless we have to. So, uh-huh. um, yeah, a lot of times we just like sleep with a blank with like in our naked basically and then with a buckwheat <laughs> pillow because it's cooling. It doesn't get hot uh, like cotton pillows do. Yeah. But they're they're supposedly they mold to your head and I don't like it. Yeah. Cause when I move, then it's kind of like weird because it's already molded, pre-molded to the the way when, your head was. When you move at night, because it's buckwheat, does it like make a lot of noise or wakes you it up? It does. <laughs> um, at the noise doesn't wake up your, your neighbor, like whoever you're sleeping next to, but or because I had a bunk bed, I was sharing a room with my, um, with my sisters and, uh, some other family members, but, um, yeah, I mean, some people you like, either like it or you hate it. That's, that's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> you either like it or you hate it. That was a weird little segue we did right there. <laughs> yeah. But about sleep, pillows. sleep quality is really important. So, uh, if you, it's not just pillows, like even your sheets, like I'm not telling you to get really expensive sheets, but if you live in a hotter climate, don't get like a flannel bed sheet. Obviously, get something like a satin or um, linen or cotton. Or what something, if I like? But... What if I like to cut weight while I'm sleeping? You know, <laughs> <laughs> then sleep in a sauna suit. <laughs> I would get some uh, yeah. flannel sheets, two mm-hmm. down coverings, my sauna suit. You know, my heater on. It'd be great. Wake up in a pool of sweat. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, my my sleep quality is just. In- um, gotten better and my neck doesn't hurt as much now when I sleep. So yeah, mm-hmm. highly recommend it. All it's right. A good segue. So get good sleep people. And here's another segue. So <laughs> last week or last episode, mm-hmm. we talked about training older and we actually had a viewer comment on it and mm-hmm. Anthony, what'd they say? Let's see. So let me pull it up. Okay. The, it was on Reddit. I've, I've been posting our episodes weekly on Reddit. Um, just in case people want to have a discussion, cause we don't really get emails often. Uh, so the user's name was Theo nobody. Yeah. Theo nobody. This is great. I contribute to a blog about being an older judoka and I'm really keen for more people to take it up past their thirties and forties. If BJJ can be popularized for the 40 plus crowd, so can judo check it out. So his, I'll link in the description, but his blog is called an older judoka dot online. Um, Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, I just noticed his uh, SSL certificate expired. So make sure you type in HTTP colon slash slash and not HTTPS. <laughs> but it's, it's a I blog. I a little bit of coding to look it up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a blog. You just talk about, it's not just old judo, um, not just posts about training as an older judoka, but um, he does other stuff too. And it looks like he's in the UK, but um, he just, it's just a judo blog. So it's pretty interesting to check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because I technically we're both not that old. So it's kind of interesting to take a uh, perspective from someone who's older. Well, we actually got a lot of feedback from one of our old instructors, gave me feedback mm-hmm. that's back in Japan. And one of our older members really yeah. enjoyed the podcast. Think that like 
just it was just talking about stuff that people don't want to talk about. You know, the whole thing of like, you know, yeah, take it back. You can't do rondo yeah. all the time, but you still do judo. You can still do chikomis. You can still do light rondo. You still do yeah. like some yakuseko geiko and stuff. But yeah, we got it was actually a very good episode. A lot of people liked it. Got a lot of feedback from people directly and direct messages. So, yep. So this week's episode. Anything else you want to talk about before going to the main topic? No, go ahead. All right. So this week's episode is going to be so. Anthony does a lot of fitness things. You can see he's showing off the guns today to take us to the gun show. So Anthony does a lot of fitness things. We're talking about like, what is fitness directly for judo? And this is something that actually one of our instructors, Sensei Philippe talks about all the time. Mm -hmm. And something that I definitely follow because that's how I grew up in wrestling was what is fitness for judo? Not fitness for fitness, not fitness for working out. It's what is fitness for judo and what are things you can do directly for judo? I know we, we hit this topic before with what I do on the side and what Anthony does on the side, but Anthony's actually gone through some programs and some things that he does and he's built himself um, directly for judo. You know, it's the whole thing of, um, I can't remember what fight it was, but it was, um, I remember because it was Dominic Cruz was uh, doing the announcing for it. And um, I think it was John Anik was like, oh, so-and-so runs uh, 10 miles every day or runs for an hour. I can't yeah. It's something like a long running thing. And Dominic goes, and how's that supposed to help him with his fighting? I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, Dominic. Oh, throwing shade. Oh. A lot of people don't like, like Dominic Cruz for that reason. Yeah, he does. This. And I, was, I think it was the same. I think it was the same fight. The again, John Anik was like, "Oh, and so and so's dad was an amateur MMA fighter." And Dominic was like, <laughs> "Amateur, so he couldn't get in the ring." Get like said something about like couldn't get do the real deal. I was like, "Oh, damn, Dom, so mean, <laughs> cutting to the core, shit, cut me deep, Dom." He's, he's that deep. guy. He, he's gonna come and beat me up. He's that guy that that. You, you like try to say something to start a conversation and he just kind of like shoots you down. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I will give this to Dom. He respects judo. He calls judo. He calls throws the actual judo names. And he's not like when these other wrestlers, guys that didn't mm -hmm. do rest that only did wrestling or different martial arts and be like, Oh, that, that hip throw or every throw is just that judo throw. Yeah. Oh, a really good judo that, throw. That leg trip. <laughs> yeah. That leg trip. Like last night, someone did, um, uh, one of the guys, I think he, I think he lost, but um, he did really good. Uh, uh, Ogoshi and Koshiguruma, and Daniel Cormier just like that head and arm throw. <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> Daniel Cormier said that head and arm throw. Oh, that body throw! I'm like, ah, DC, you should know better. You train with a bunch of judo players, you should know their names by this point. <laughs> but he's a wrestler. He actually just opened his own uh, wrestling gym, like north of here, north of really? LA somewhere. Yeah, like. North of LA. Okay. Yeah. Like I want, I'm going to get it wrong. It's not close to LA. It's like in Calabasas or some crap. Like it's Calabasas. Like, oh, I it's thought he was all in, set up in, in between here, in between here and San Francisco somewhere. There. In between here and San, well, we're yeah, it might be San Jose. I don't know. Well, the thing is like, I know he's one of the head, not one of the head coach. I, I think he's one of the head up. coaches now at AKA now that he's fully retired and he was coaching mm -hmm. at, I think it was Gilroy uh, high school. He was rest, uh, training at their program because mm -hmm. as I said before, one of my friends I wrestled with in high school. Now he's the head wrestling coach at a program. And he, when um, they announced Daniel Cormier was going to be a coach, he's like, it's going to be a pleasure to go against you, sir. And I'm like, screw that. No, you tell him I'm coming for you, Daniel. I'm coming Gil for you, DC. <laughs> it's Gilroy, California. Where yeah. Is that? Yeah. That's in the Bay, man. It's not in no, LA. Okay. I said north of here. South I, Bay. I, north. Way hey, north. I, I'm in. <laughs> hey, it's south, south of San Jose. I was right. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the Bay. Yeah. That's where it is. Hey, I'm in the everybody South Bay remember, <laughs> I'm from the Bay. All right. I'm from San Jose, Santa Clara. All right. That's where I'm from. I almost actually trained at AK when I was a teenager, but some other shit happened. <laughs> but let's get back to our topic. Let's get okay. back to what we're talking about. So Anthony wants to talk about these programs that he's gone through and done that are supposed to be for judo. You know, we're not running and running. We're not doing cross. We're not just trying to be the best athlete. We're trying to be yeah. the best athletes for judo and what's going to help us out for judo, which coincidentally enough, a lot of CrossFit actually does cross into judo and helping, helping out. Cause that's a lot of stuff that I do. I like doing a lot of that dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. So for context, um, I'm six foot four, you know this, right? So yeah. I've been this, this no, really tall. you're six. <laughs> four. I thought you were like five, two. I've been this tall since I was 16 around 16. And now at the time I was 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. which is uh very very light actually what's that in kilos for our european listeners oh, man, how, <laughs> that's pretty that's a good question i don't know <laughs> 160 pounds to kg 
That's uh, around 70, around 72 and a half kilos. That's how uh, light I was right now. I'm 215 ish. So it's like right under, right under a hundred kilos, like around 98 ish. Um, so the, all the training programs that I'm about to talk about is from my point of view of trying to gain weight over the years. Um, I started to try and gain weight in college because that well, was when okay, I, let's put this. You mean like muscle mass weight, muscle not just, mass, yeah, just mass in, muscle mass general. So I've tried, I've tried to do traditional like lifting programs and all that kind of stuff. And luckily uh, I met a guy in college that was like a Olympic lifter. Like mm-hmm. he was, he had a coach that was teaching him Olympic lifting. So he was like teaching me all that kind of stuff too. So he was teaching me the proper form and everything. And shortly after I, I transferred school, so I wasn't training with him anymore. But then I started looking at these online training programs, not the, what you're thinking now, like now you have like Instagram online coaches and all that kind of stuff selling you programs, but this is um, dial up coaches. All right. This is back in the day. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so there's one program that you probably heard of it by this guy, this famous weightlifting coach called uh, Mark Ripto. And he uh, has his training program called starting strength. Mm-hmm. So that was the first program I ever took. And it, it was cause most people said you're going to see the most gains of this. And it focuses on the three on compound lifts. So basically squat bench deadlift, like an, um, power cleans to, to, to a certain extent. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll explain the power cleans in a sec, but if you never lifted weights before, that's a pretty good program to go into. Cause, um, it does not focus on looking at your weight in the beginning. It look, it focuses on the number of weight you're lifting. So mm-hmm. I saw every week I was adding five to 10 pounds on the bar. So I was lifting more and more weights every week. And then obviously it plateaus after a while, but um, I was seeing lots of progress. And I think within a year, I went from 160 to 230 pounds, 230 pounds. All right. So, and I was lifting. How much, uh, well, how much protein were you eating at the same time? Was there like a diet plan to go with it? Yeah. So the diet plan, I'll I'll talk about a diet plan in a sec, but um, obviously eating is a huge part of it. And Mm -hmm to give you context, I'm going starting from the beginning because that was me not knowing anything and reading this book and then trying things out. And I, I'm going to suggest most people here to try out these programs and see what works for you. Cause why I ended up switching away from that program was because number one, I got bored because <laughs> mm-hmm. every, every it's a uh, three times uh, a week, three to four times a week. And you're always doing the same list over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I got bored and I, I just ended up doing something else. Um, number two, uh, some of the movements like power cleans, uh, I hurt my back one time doing that. Okay. So I had to replace it with bent over rows, but it just was not the same because it doesn't have that explosive movement. And mm-hmm. I think it's, a really, really good exercise for judo power cleans. If you have someone to teach you how to do it right. Yeah. But I was on muscle relaxants for like two months and I like, it it was terrible. Uh, Um, another thing is my schedule because my schedule is so, um, at the time I was working a lot of hours and now I'm working a lot of hours too, but my schedule was not very uh, unsure. So I couldn't keep that, um, workout schedule anymore. So I had to change to something else that was more flexible. Mm-hmm. Now, regarding diet, I was eating 5,000 calories a day <laughs> because I, I was already eating calories? a lot. Were you eating a lot of um, so rice, was, meat, beans? What was it? In the beginning, uh, so I, I had a free ride for my university. So I was able to afford to spend a lot on groceries. So I was trying to clean, uh, eat cleanly and stuff and um so I was buying like meat and organic foods and stuff like that. But then my grocery bills were like $700 a month yeah. for one person. Eating, eating clean costs yeah. a lot of money. It costs so reason. much money. <laughs> to eat organic costs a lot. Yeah. And then I, I, w- I didn't really know how to, well, I knew how to cook, but I didn't know how to meal prep or all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Right. So mm-hmm. eventually I just started, I was like, screw this. I'm not going to count. Uh, eat clean anymore. So I'm just going to count calories. So I was like, what's the most cheap protein dense open late at night <laughs> calorie dense food you can get. So it was like McDonald's and Burger King. So I was oh, eating you go to late night Denny's get big old steak, man. <laughs> All right. So I was, I, eating, <laughs> I was eating 5,000 calories a day on that. 
um, mm -hmm. on like this junk food basically. And there's this, yeah. uh, out, out of my college, there was a deli that sold a sandwich called a gasm. The gasm. <laughs> yeah. The, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know what, what I know where the name came yeah, from. It's just right? like, it's really delicious, but it has so many bad fat things like bacon, uh, Russian dressing, coleslaw, like everything mashed into the sandwich. Uh, um, so I was eating like that and eventually my stomach was just like having issues. Like I had gastroenteritis. I had to go to an emergency room and get that looked at. Um, so I, after that I moved into a house and I was able to start meal prepping and I went to, I went to Costco and I bought like, uh, packs of meat and for the whole year, all I was eating was baked chicken breast <laughs> with no salt because of the sodium and then just yeah. garlic powder and black pepper. And then salmon and broccoli and no rice. Mm. As an Asian, eating no rice for no, a whole that's year. such a that's yeah. such a dumb myth right there. That's so, it's yeah. been proven wrong that you can eat rice because it yes. burns fast. There's that whole myth out there that uh, one thing of rice, like a little tiny thing of rice, like you can't see my hand right here, but about, like a little thing of rice is supposed to be the same equivalent to a slice of bread. It is, but mm -hmm. rice burns so much more faster. And that's why yep. in some cultures where they can't get a lot of protein, they eat rice and beans yes. to get that protein right there because exactly. it burns fast. And I hate this thing where these new fitness people are trying to say, oh, you can't eat rice. It's too much. It's especially too white carbs. Especially white rice. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. No, it burns fast. It's fine to eat rice. Yep. That's how I mean. When I wrestled my mostly in high school and a little bit in college, that's one cheap, of my biggest meals was cheap energy. Rice. Yeah. Cheap I energy is rice filling. And for, and for flavor, I put salsa on it because I'm a <laughs> fucking Mexican. So I need some flavor. So I have white rice with salsa on it. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get too much into the diet thing, but obviously <laughs> eventually I, I found out the low carb, uh, high protein, not eating rice thing was affecting my mood. Like you need mm -hmm. carbs. Like I was getting really, uh, short tempered, I guess. Mm -hmm. so you're irritated you're, ha you're your body's irritated. hungry and yeah. stuff you know yeah i mean i was eating a lot but then just not having carbs was like hard and i was mm -hmm. i was uh i wasn't training judo yet at the time but i was playing uh handball uh pretty competitively not, not cholo handball not cholo, handball right <laughs> not olympic handball cholo handball <laughs> not, oh, cholo handball yeah. oh sa you're in cholo handball yeah, yeah, yeah. He, had he had his dickies uh, on official, and stuff official has sport beard. in new york city in the parks <laughs> but um i was playing handball I was, I was lifting weights i was running and like i was just burning so many calories but i don't have any carbs so mm -hmm. eventually i added that back and i was i was lifting a lot of weights i was benching like 300 pounds at the time i was squatting God like, damn anthony yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the strongest I've ever been. Um, uh -huh. And then I started training judo, and then I realized being this big doesn't help. Like my, I couldn't touch my back. <laughs> like I, I couldn't touch <laughs> my back. Joke. We my, put the tape on your middle of your back. Hey, Anthony, get this tape off your back here. My, <laughs> uh, I can't do my it. My elbows wouldn't touch. Like I can't, I can't do this. I, mean, I couldn't touch my elbows, and it's like uh -huh. not. It was, it was it that kind of strength is not useful. And sensei, as Wait, sensei you was said, amazing. But you look amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, also another another thing was my my clothes wouldn't fit. That was another huge problem. And then when I go on, I like to travel. So when I go on a plane, I'm like take, I'm like bulging into other people's seats. And <laughs> um, yeah. So that overall, I just stopped uh, trying to gain mass, especially since I didn't want to fight an open weight class. Right. Yeah. So that's when I started delving into body weight training. So before I move into body weight training, if you're a beginner and you're trying to gain uh, strength, like you've never lifted before starting strength, I still recommend it. It teaches you all the basics, uh, compound movements, mm -hmm. and you'll see great results, but I don't think it's a good long, long-term program to stick with unless uh, you just kind of supplement it with your judo training. But body weight training was the next thing I, I did because it uses a lot of state, um, trains a lot of balance mm -hmm. and, um, uses a lot of isometric holds. I mean, you kind of have to have good um, cardio to do a lot of that kind of stuff. So I started doing um, like rings with it too. And then mm -hmm. like uh, dips. And um, for a long time, I was almost, I was working towards doing the planche. You ever, you know what a planche is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was doing towards that. But then but long story short, a lot of that stuff was really rough on my joints. So my mm -hmm. shoulders were hurting and like, my, like my wrists were hurting and it was just affecting my judo too. So I kind of, yeah. I kind of stopped that doing that. And then, um, after a while we, I started doing this, uh, 
I was just like doing random stuff, like trying out different things. And then I came across this thing called the Tabata method. Tabata method. Yeah. So like so, a fighting style from India. <laughs> no, his name is <laughs> named that. So I'm going to read it from this page. So right. it was discovered by this Japanese scientist called Izumi Tabata. Mm-hmm. So a team of scientists in Tokyo. Um, so they conducted a research on two groups of athletes. The first group trained at a moderate intensity level, while the second group trained at a high intensity level. Mm -hmm. Moderate intensity group worked out five days a week for a total of six weeks. Each workout lasted one hour. Mm -hmm. The high intensity group worked out four days a week for six weeks. Each workout lasted four minutes and 20 seconds with 10 seconds of rest in between each set. Okay. So do you want to take a guess what the result was? I'm thinking that the high intensity got better results faster, but didn't last that long. Well, okay. So here group one had increased their aerobic system, but showed little or no results for their anaerobic system muscle. So Mm -hmm. they increased their cardiovascular, but their muscles were like almost nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Group two showed much more increase in their aerobic system than group one and increase their anaerobic system by 28%. Mm. So they had better cardio because of the high intensity. Yeah. And also their muscles got 28% more um, results. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, high intensity interval training has more impact on both the aerobic and anaerobic systems. And this kind you kind of see why, um, CrossFit is so popular. And also since the says CrossFit is the closest thing to judo because that yeah. is high intensity interval training CrossFit, mm-hmm. the whole system they're doing. The problem with CrossFit is like they're doing really technical movements at high speed and it's dangerous, but and that's doing, something else. I might get some heat for this. I'm going to say it anyways. You're doing a lot of stuff with bad technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, before I go into detail, so each exercise in a given Tabata workout lasts only four minutes. So every Exercise lasts only four minutes, Mm -hmm. but it's likely to be one of the longest four minutes you've ever endured. And I can, I can, uh, I know you've been on wrestling mat. (laughs) Yeah. The structure of the program is that you've been a wrestling mat or a judo mat. That's what I'm talking about. Four minutes. Yeah. (laughs) So you work out hard for 20 seconds, like as fast Mm -hmm. as possible and then rest for 10 seconds and do eight Mm -hmm. rounds. Yeah. So that, that's one exercise. Mm Mm-hmm. How many so exercises after, do you do in, in the set? Like, uh, is there like, so, so you do four sets of four. No, no. So mm-hmm. there's eight rounds. So eight rounds of 20 seconds with 10 seconds rest in between. Uh-huh. Okay. And then that's one exercise. You pick four exercise per workout. Okay. All yeah. right. So you pick four. Okay. Yep. Uh, second, hold on a second. Let me, Okay. So you only pick four days a week to do this. Cause it's so the first time I did it, I was dying. Like, mm-hmm. um, but the reason why I started doing this was cause one, you, you get to pick the exercises you do for mm-hmm. the day and you can swap it around. So I don't get bored. Right. Yeah. And then you can yeah. pick exercises that are very specific to the judo movement. Mm-hmm. Um, the next, the next thing you could do, um, the, the reason I picked it was cause it's fast, right? You can do this in the lunch break or right before bed. If that's oh yeah, yeah. Thing. You like, get a yeah. good sweat before we go to sleep. Or like, hey, no, boss, you know, just coming back from lunch, soaking yeah. sweat and shit. But sometimes, sometimes I'm like, oh crap, I had to work out today. But it's already like I had to work all day. I had to do this and that at grocery shop. I had to go on a date or whatever. And now it's like an hour or two hours oh, before bed. I had to go on a date. <laughs> oh, look at Amy. I have yeah. to go on a date here. Basically, <laughs> as I got older, my responsibilities increased and my obligations uh-huh. increased, and then I my time and flexibility and my time is less than when I was in college where I was just doing whatever the fuck I want. Right. Yeah. So this Tabata method was allowed that flexibility and also, um, was kind of, um, I don't get bored, but it's like they said, it's like really, you have to be really disciplined to go hard for that 20 seconds. And it's really Mm -hmm. easy for you to just say, give up. So, which is why I liked it too, because Mm -hmm. it kind of, mentally trains you to, to, to grind that grind. You know what I'm talking about that grind, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. The, yeah. The problem, like going back, taking a step back is some of these programs are beginner programs because they don't have you do that grind. Mm-hmm. And then you have people like Travis Stevens who says you need to train hard all the time because you have to develop that mental, um, 
the mental, mental toughness, toughness. Keep going when you want to stop. Yeah. But then where's there's like no in between. And this for me was in between, <laughs> I think like doing this uh-huh. two times a week was like good enough for me, you know, mm-hmm. versus doing this all the time. It's overtraining. I'm sore all the time. Like that just doesn't help. But this is a good, like I, it, this rec- recommends you do four times a week. I've still found that too much. Um, really? I, yeah. I did it two times, two times a week. And then the other times I mixed it with like more judo, more BJJ. And then I did add some running and swimming into it. Mm -hmm. So that was like what I did for a while. And it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But I started wanting to take it, like take it to the next level kind of thing. Right. Cause I I saw results, but I wasn't keeping up with, um, people like Charles, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like people that yeah. train, actually train hard that I, I was like, okay, there's has to be a way for me to not surpass Charles, but like get close to him mm-hmm. without training. Like he does. Cause he's like a yeah. person, he trains like a, hard, right? He trains all, that's all he does is train as he's yeah. one of those guys that does train all day long. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking of what can I do as a guy with a full-time job and other stuff and like his, he's a personal trainer cause he's been, he can lift all day. So I'm like, what can mm-hmm. I do as, and that's when I came across this um, series of book called Tactical Barbell. Okay. So before my surgery, my knee injury, like um, well, it was after my knee injury, but it was before my, I had to get a surgery. I was doing this and I was seeing really, really good results. Mm-hmm. So it basically is written by a guy that um, for, it's written for people who have a demanding day job, like firefighters, um, if you're in the military and you have to go training on the weekend, like Kevin does like reserve mm-hmm. or you're a police officer or whatever, like you have something physically demanding. So you can't afford to train like Charles does. And then like, go to job, go to your work, like all sore and, and tired and everything. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's written for people like that. So I started reading, it, it's a series of books and I, I can't, there's so much information that I can't even remember it right now, but I really highly recommend everyone to buy the books are kind of cheap during ebook. Um, you read it and then you come up with your own training plan schedule that helps you come up with something so, has, it has these templates that you use and you fill in the exercises okay. into it. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it'll, it'll tell you there's like endurance days where you would like run. And then there's days that you would like lift like 20, 10, like light weights, but like 20 reps. And then there mm-hmm. are days where you would, um, do heavy weights and low reps Mm -hmm. and then it has this like progression and periodization system um advancing and the key thing is they tell you you don't have to be sore and exhausted to get a good workout in because a lot of people that's a lie that's bullshit i don't believe that (laughs) you you see a lot of people like you that's fake fake news (laughs) it goes goes back to your thing of like how in the last we talk about like just doing four minute intervals yeah. To me, like I'm just one of these old school guys where it's like, if I'm going to work out, I'm going to work out for at least an hour. I got to set yep. at least an hour away for me to work out and do the short little interval things to me. I know they work. It's like, I know I'm not stupid. I believe mm-hmm. the science. I've seen the pro. I know it works. But in my damn fucking cro magnon head here, I'm thinking, oh, bro, work one hour, two hour workout. I need. <laughs> so going back to what I said, the, remember the goal of this program is so you can still go to work and perform. Mm-hmm. And in my case, work work is judo. Like I can still go to judo and BJJ and not be like exhausted. Cause there was a time when I was doing that Tabata and body weight stuff, I would go to BJJ and I was slow. Everything was sore. I can't, I can't like, if it feels like I'm like, my strength is like, I, like I'm 70 or something. <laughs> so once I started this program, I saw my, I was less tired. It was more, I feel like I was more strong and fast. And mm-hmm. also I was, I, I was able to perform better and focus better because mentally it was like not exhausted. Right. Yeah. So that's when I started doing this program and the book, uh, divides it up into like, uh, there's three books. I forgot what the third book is. I didn't read it yet, but there's two. The first part is strength and then the second part is conditioning. Hmm. So, um, it starts you off with like the, what they call a base building six weeks. So there's six weeks, six weeks where you work on your cardio basically. And it's pretty hard. Like you saying you want to work hard. This is like an hour. Not, this is not for a four minute thing. Like uh-huh. each workout is like an hour or two hours and you have to like work hard and run. They make you run like, um, uh, 
30, 45 an hour. Like you can start off with like 30 minutes or 25 minutes, but you're supposed to add and not add up into mm-hmm. like an hour plus. And it has the conditioning, it has the strength training. Some, some days are the grind days. Some days are the light days. So it just filled in all the, uh, the gaps for me. And, um, but then again, the only downside is because of that set schedule, sometimes I can't make a day and then I have to make it up somehow and it just messes up with it. But, um, yeah. it, yeah, I highly recommend the system. There's a whole subreddit for it on Reddit, like reddit.com slash tactical barbell and people discuss mm-hmm. and discuss the, the training program. A lot of people on there train BJJ to use this program. Um, yeah, not yeah. so much judo, which is why I'm trying to advertise it for judo more because of how much success I had out of well, it. I'm not sure about tactical barbell, but your okay. um, the other system, the, the Japanese system, what was that one the called again? Tabata. The, Tabata. The Tabata yeah. system sounds very similar to something that we already do here at Hollywood Judo yep. that we call it's based off the training. same. Yeah, it's based off the it's same very similar science. To yeah. training that we do and how we do stuff that we'll do uh, barbells, kettlebells, or chikomis, uh, pull ups, we we'll do all these things, and we do it for, we, we do like, what do we do? 30 second. Mm-hmm. Interval, we do 30 second rounds yep. and then we do like a 10 second rest. And we do that yep. about like, I think we do it like eight rounds or something, eight or 10 rounds. We yep. do that just going around in circles, it's circuit training all the way around and stuff. And it's up to you how hard you want to go. Like yep. if we've had people that come like, oh, it wasn't that hard for me. It's like, yeah, because you didn't work that hard. Then. Yeah. It's 20 it's seconds up. as long as you as fast, like as hard as you can, which is yeah. different for everyone. So some mm-hmm. people might be able to do 10 push ups. Some might be able to do 50, you know? So yeah. Yeah, it's up to you how hard you're going to go or how much you want to push yourself. So that Tabata, after you explained to me, like, oh, yeah, it's very similar to circuit yeah. training. And similar to like what I do when I do my, my mixed CrossFit stuff in there. I do the tire, hammer, and mm-hmm. sled, I do tire, sledgehammer. Yeah, so and, you can put uh, that into Tabata kettle. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very similar to what I do there. So, yeah, it's actually very, it is very similar. It is a hard workout when you do these yeah. intense rounds, these intense like 30 minutes or I don't do so much of like um, time, but I do like mm-hmm. I want to get 10, 10 set or 10 throws or not yeah. 10 throws, but 10 so the, flips or 20 flips in a certain amount of time fast. I'm not like do one flip of the tire. Mm-hmm. Okay. Walk around. And that's what I hated growing up when I, the old school weight training that I grew up with wrestling. And that's why I didn't like weight training. Cause it was like, okay, mm-hmm. you do a 10 set of the bench. All right. Then you walk around, get it, take a one or two minute break, yeah. come back to the bench, do another 10 sets, take another break. That's why it's I like, stopped doing I, starting strength. I hated <laughs> yeah. I what. I think that's what made me hate weight training when I was younger because of doing that. And it wasn't until I was like later into college where I learned about supersets. I was like, this makes yep. so much more sense. Yep. Why would I just do like, I get the whole thing. Of, like, you work, you rest your muscles, you work again. But to me, that was just so boring. And that's why I was, I've always grown up being like, Oh, I like just being on the mat. I like sparring. I like kicking. I like wrestling. I like, throwing people, I like working out mm-hmm. with people that, that body weight type stuff. Yep. But these new things that you brought up, they're very, they're, they're eye-opening. They're ideas that yeah. we kind of, some of us already do. We just don't know how to like manage it better, I think. And yeah, these so programs can help you manage it. In one of the older episodes, I think you heard me, I said um, a lot of sports science is still in the alchemy stage of like what chemistry was, right? Mm, so we had magic. for a long time, we know these things work. We just don't know why. That's mm. how you get all these myths about muscle confusion. Like people think like you need, you need to be sore to get a workout because mm-hmm. they, when they get sore, they notice things were like, things were getting, they were getting stronger, but then now it's like, okay, you don't have to get sore, but people still per- um, permutate these myths that you have to get sore. You got to do muscle confusion, which is not true. Um, because they, they had changed they do the muscle confusion thing because they want to get that sore feeling when it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you said, like, circuit training has been around for a while, but what's different about this this Tabata method is the research actually indicates where the point of diminishing returns is. Mm -hmm. So I said, you pick four exercises, eight rounds, right? That's where they saw the diminishing returns at that Mm -hmm. point around that timeframe for most people based off the Mm -hmm. science. Cause circuit training, people are, all right, I'm going to do circuit training, but they don't really specify how many exercises for how long, right? Some people mm-hmm. do it for an hour or two. I don't know what the hell CrossFit does, right? But Tabata here mm-hmm. actually tells you like, okay, you can, it's four exercises, you can do five or six, but you're not going to get back as much as you did in that four. This is, mm-hmm. if you do those four exercises, that's how you maximize your returns is what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And after every, everything after that is diminishing returns. So I'm not telling you not to do it, if you want to do it, go ahead. It's just that you're not going to be getting the same. So, 
the science proves it. <laughs> yeah. So that's now, that's uh, the interesting the, science behind it. Now you might know this. Does the Japanese national team use this uh, Chibata method? Uh, so they they keep it a secret. Obviously, oh, a, a lot. Of, yeah. Ooh, I okay. tried looking up so much about their diets and everything. Like the UK and France, and I think Canada also publishes what they recommend that their diet, um, their athletes eat, mm-hmm. and it's just basic like balance, <laughs> high balance, protein. high protein, <laughs> high carb diet, balanced nutrition, eat your veggies and fruit. And <laughs> Take your vitamin to say prayers. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure they have like, they hired like specialists, dietitians. They have to. Yeah. Dietitian, nutrition. Yeah. So stuff. Here, yeah. here's another thing for our American listeners. Um, the term nutritionist, the, the, the title nutritionist is not regulated. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So you can go to the, like one of the big nutritionist uh, groups and pay them like a couple hundred bucks, take a weekend course, and then you're going to be like a certified nutritionist. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about other countries. I think in some other EU countries is actually regulated. But what most people are looking for, which is expensive, is a dietitian in America. You actually have to go to school and pass like a reg- national uh nationally regulated tests become a dietitian and get kind of like becoming a doctor. You have to oh, like go through this. We're going to get some heat from nutritionists next. That's the next one we're going to get heat from. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, you so, can move the dojo anytime you want. Come on. Come so, over. <laughs> I'm not saying nutritionists aren't um, legit. There are a lot of legit ones, but then they're kind of giving you information. That's really like stuff that we can t- find online and <laughs> look up ourselves, look up ourselves. <laughs> but um, Yeah. Look, if you're looking for, if you're a serious athlete, look for a dietitian, not a nutritionist. They mm-hmm. actually have the proper training. Dietitians don't only deal with uh, athletes. They also, also deal with people who are, have seizures. Like they create um, diet plans for them so that they, they don't um, have seizures. They work with like obese people to get them to lose weight and stuff. So mm-hmm. that's what you're looking for. You're not going to have a, like the hospitals have dietitians. They don't have nutritionists. So mm. that that's just um, one thing I wanted to say. Okay. Um, hey, going back to the topic, like I don't know what they eat. Like I think I told you when I went to the Tokyo World Championships, I was like trying to. I was at staying at the same hotel as athletes, and I was trying to see what they're eating, and it uh-huh. seemed pretty normal. Um, also, they 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 weren't eating rice. I'll tell you that. Mm, okay. They weren't eating really? rice. I'll tell you that. They weren't eating <laughs> um, rice. I don't, at least the athletes that didn't go to the athletes only like dining. And then I tried, I tried eating, uh, asked eating. I tried asking Johnny who was competing and he was having, he was yeah. there with the athletes. Hey, what, what were they what, eating in the back? What were they eating? Like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, I was so starstruck. I was asking people for pictures. I wasn't paying attention to what they were eating. So yeah. Oh my God. That's funny. So I don't, I don't know what they eat, but the, the training you, you do notice people like Shohei Ono pub like publicly upload their, their training and they do a lot of explosive weightlifting, um, like squats, power lifts and stuff. So they do a lot of that. And, um, here, Oh, here's another thing. Speaking of squats, when you do power, power lifting, Olympic, uh, lifting, they tell you to do ass to grass, like low squats. Like you, yeah. you have to go below parallel, but this is not, I, I think most studies have shown that that's not ideal for judo because mm-hmm. you don't very often go that low. When you usually well, go that low, at, you drop. I'm working on a very deep drop sonagi. Okay, not drop. I'm working on very <laughs> yes. low. So low when you so nagi, okay? when you drop that low, you usually go on your knees. So it's what's more uh, better is actually ha- what they call half squats, which is like you go to parallel or above and then. you Go back up because yeah. that that similar the, the thing where what, yeah. um where people do the whole thing where they sit on a bench to make sure they don't yeah or a bench squat, yeah or a box squat yeah. is what I call it so yeah. you only go that you don't go all the way down you only go halfway and and then come back up that and you that way you move more weight you lift more weights actually mm-hmm. and it's more preferable than using lifting less weights and going deeper so for judo specific training that's actually better which is fun cuz on reddit on the sumo subreddit someone posted uh the new yokozuna uh Tiruna Fuji posted his mm-hmm. workout regime and then people were like that's a shitty squat that's a shitty cuz he was also doing um the power rack pulls like the mm-hmm. the pulling but from the power rack yeah it's like that he was like that's a shitty deadlift why is he cheating using the power rack and i'm like how often does a sumo wrestler pick someone up from the floor 
<laughs> yeah. Do you ever see a sumo wrestler get on a kataguruma or something or firing yeah. carrier or wooden nage another sumo wrestler? <laughs> yeah. So it's very just when you do these movements, just think about how uh, it it um, relates to your sport. Exactly. Like a lot of a lot of people from other sports that don't do judo would be like, what what the hell does those uh, uchikomi bands do? You know, like. But mm-hmm. it's like very it's a very judo and grappling specific uh, um, workout. Um, yeah, you're gonna see football players or front linemen doing uchikomi bands. <laughs> <laughs> they do say judo works really well for rugby and football, like. So I can totally see it. I went as a side story here a long time ago. I was do playing a football player in a movie and I was playing a lineman. Like I'm pretty small yeah. lineman here. So I was playing a lineman and I'm blocking this guy. And this guy was just like, getting really intense, like the entire scene. So after no, I was like, you know what? I'm going to Oshawa's this shit out of this guy. <laughs> so I grabbed him by his, I grabbed his uniform. He's like, pop, pop, pop. I trying to like fucking sumo palm me and stuff. I grab his, I grab his, um, his shoulder pads and I mm-hmm. Ashiwaza him with my cleats and I flip him over <laughs> and he goes like, he falls over and flips and he's like, what happened? What happened? Like, I don't know, man. You, you <laughs> fell somehow. I just moved, we were, we were doing the scene and you fell and he's like, oh man, good scene though, man. Great scene. I'm like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, see, so judo can work in the football too. You know, it's yep. Ashwaza to them, you know? I don't know. That's probably not legal. Probably can't grab the shoulder pads. <laughs> so that we talked a lot about lifting, but one other thing I want to talk about is like uh cardiovascular. Cause mm-hmm. um I hate I personally hate running. I hate running so much. But um <laughs> I was I used to do Muay Thai, um, as you know, and the place I went to was one of those places where like if you're not serious about it, we don't want you kind of thing. Cause they're not in it for the money. Mm-hmm. And I like threw up on my first week of class. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I need to do something. I, I hate running, but I love Muay Thai. So I'm going to start running so that I'm able mm-hmm. to do that. But then I didn't, nobody taught me how to run. So I, it seems stupid, right? Like how you need to be taught run, running, but it's actually, I think it's good to have a running coach. I don't I've never had a running coach. And I actually think I should get one. One, because it prevents damages to your knees if you have like a poor running form and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And for me, I ha- for me in running, it's either zero or 100. Like, yeah. I don't know how to pace myself. So I started doing research on how to increase my cardiovascular system for Muay Thai. And there was actually a blog post I saved here somewhere that uh, I'll link in the description that explains how the aerobic system and anaerobic system works. But mm-hmm. the short version is, they rec- this is also kind of interlines with the other research um, that we talked about, about when going, how, how it goes in their program. And also what Philippe says, Philippe says you only want to run at 80% or mm-hmm. go at 80% uh, pace. So you, you, what you want is this thing called targeted heart rate, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, for your young, your average 20 to 40 uh, healthy adult, you want your heart's beat per minute to be between 130 and 150. So I bought, you don't really need a chest strap monitor, a heart rate monitor anymore, because most of the smart watches nowadays, smart <laughs> I device, knew you were say one. that. Yeah, they're, well, they're my pretty high watch right here tells me what I. <laughs> they're pretty, if you look at it, they're, they're accurate enough. There's This doesn't have to be really, really accurate. So you mm-hmm. just get one of those things. And then I go, I went running. I got one for like 80 bucks. It started running and, I make sure every time my heart rate went past 150, I would slow down a little bit. And, and every time it drops below 130, I would like run back, speed go up back up. Bit. Yeah. Speed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that like helped so much. Like I'd started, um, I, st- I had to run 30 minutes and start running an hour. And mm-hmm. I was able to keep up the Muay Thai class after a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, some obviously Mo- training Muay Thai and Judo also helped, but that, really, really helped. And it doesn't have to be running. It could be jump roping. It could be uh, swimming. It could be anything. And yeah, so I, I highly recommend people try that out too. Cardiovascular system shouldn't be uh, neglected and it's also good for your health. But um, now I'm an old school guy. So I really believe a lot into like when I'm going to start competing, like I know I, I don't mind running. Like it's not like my most favorite things, but I do feel like when I want a good workout, I'll get a run and I'll go jog. I, I should say jog. I don't go for like a heavy yeah. run. I go jogging for like a good 30 minutes, sometime an hour or so I'll go jog. But when it comes to competition time, I'll start doing my wind sprints. 
Now, are yeah. wind sprints still considered good? Or are they like, oh, they're bad? For oh, yeah, they're nowadays? good. But so, you don't, you don't. So you, you that's that's what goes into the, about the aerobic compared to anaerobic system, right? Mm-hmm. When you're doing sprints, that's working out the anaerobic system. Mm-hmm. The anaerobic system does not work out the aerobic system really well. If that, if you get what I mean, so it doesn't really it increases your explo- um your explosiveness, but mm-hmm. it doesn't really help with your gas tank and your recovery. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So. So. This is this. Is, so this is one thing from that mm-hmm. running running experience. Um, they actually have training for uh anaerobic after, but they want you to build a cardiovascular base first because if you have a good cardiovascular base, mm-hmm. it'll actually help develop your anaerobic later on your anaerobic system later on. And that's, I actually noticed that in my judo tournament was that I wasn't an explosive, but then when I, when I um, do exert strength, like I'd go in for a throw and then it's mate, I recover really fast. I recover faster. faster. Like my heart rate mm-hmm. drops back lower, faster. So that running experience helped with that. Um, so anaerobic, Yes. Running develops the base basically. So I forgot what I was going to say, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause I was saying, cause um, me personally, like uh, growing up, you do the traditional wind sprints where like you go to like a, a parking lot or a basketball court and you, you do, you like, you know how it is. You run to the yeah. first line, run back, run the first, second line, run back, third line, run back, 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 yeah. back, back. And you're doing that yeah. for intensity. You know, the only stop you have is when you stop to touch the line and you come back. Yeah. Then when I was older, I was taught um, a different style of winds. I, call, I still call it a wind sprint. Some people called it something else. I can't remember what they called it. But it was that you basically do a wind sprint, but you sprint for 20 seconds, I think, and then you rest for 10, mm-hmm. sprint for 20, and you rest for five. You, you, like just, you, just, you just described like the Bata kind of. <laughs> so, Is that what it was? Is that Okay, yeah, that's one that I was. You, I'm st- yeah. So I'm telling you, there's like different variations yeah. of it. It's just that Tabata has signs backing it up. You know, uh-huh. so, so that's, that would be, that'd be a Tabata method. Yeah. Shit, I I apparently do a lot of Tabata stuff on my own apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when I, going back to tactical barbell, they actually uh-huh. have days where you would do the sprints and then days that you would do these long runs because you need to develop both your your aerobic and anaerobic ability. So mm-hmm. you need you need both. You can't just have one. And yeah. running is really good because it because I hate it. It de- I realize it helps me develop that strong grind mentality. Mm-hmm. And also it's, if you, do, it. if you do it too much, it's bad for your joints. I, I will say that I haven't been able to run because of my knee surgery, mm-hmm. but um, it's also develops a lot of muscles from Muay Thai. I don't know about judo, but from my Muay Thai, it helps a lot with the kicks and, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. but in the end, like most people are going to agree with this. If you're, if you only have time for one thing, go do judo, go do BJJ, go do <laughs> Muay Thai. Don't like lift mm-hmm. weights and hope it'll like, make your judo better when it won't it's just it's that's a, there's a reason to call it supplemental training and it's yes. not like yeah so don't don't go pull up the, the the tactical barbell schedule and be like oh i will want to go to judo but today like right now around this time slot i'm supposed to be doing run, um doing bench presses like <laughs> no uh-huh. go do judo like <laughs> fuck the bench, bench press <laughs> Well, then you get back to the thing of like what ruined, well, to a lot of people, what ruined judo back in the, was it 70s or 80s? Mm-hmm. I can't remember where people just wanted to get bigger, stronger, fast. I think it might have been the 80s where people just want to get bigger, stronger, faster. I thought that would help out their judo or kickboxing or a lot of combat skills back in the day were just getting bigger, stronger, faster. And that would make me a better player. And instead, it made ugly judo, ugly wrestling, ugly kickboxing back in the day. And like nowadays with the sports science, you can see it with MMA now where people are like, mm-hmm. you got to work for your sport. You got to make sure they are MMA muscles or judo muscles or karate muscles, where it's not just big bulky muscles. Like you're saying, you, you got big as hell, but that wasn't helping your judo. It wasn't yeah. helping your technique. You couldn't throw anybody. You could try to muscle people over, but is that really what you want? Do you really just want to out muscle someone over in a judo mm-hmm. match? Like really we're, we're here for big throws and nice technique for the most part. Most of us are. I know some of us aren't. I know you guys are out there. Now you're out there, just strength muscle guys. Just want to throw somebody across the room with your strength. <laughs> yeah. So the one thing that none of these programs really address though is stretching, like mm-hmm. flexibility. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a big that, thing that, yeah. I know it's a big thing you mirror like different on different pages on. Like I like stretching. I like doing a good stretch before class. You're big on stretching after class. Yeah. Cause I, I used to stretch a lot before class, but 
I didn't see the benefits as much, mm-hmm. I guess. So it kind of got lazy. And then, um, then I saw the sign. Well, then I saw it. Well, so, so then I saw the science backing it up saying like dynamic stretches are good for before exercise, but long periods of static stretches are better for post exercise. Mm-hmm. And you actually see this in, um, a lot of clubs and also old school judo too. Like, why do we do tumbling and high knees and, and stuff in the beginning of class? And then in a lot of traditional Japanese dojos, we do like sit down, relax, stretching after class. Because mm-hmm. it's like, again, it's some people knew it kind of worked, but they don't know why. But now the science is backing it up. <laughs> it's, it's your alchemy theory. <laughs> yeah, they, they tell you, they actually say that if you stretch too much before class, it actually help, uh, increases the risk of damage because you're too your, yeah. your muscles are too loose, doesn't yeah. hold hold things together as well. That's what I was told when I was teaching karate. Like yeah. you want to stretch with the kids because like you'll teach like two or three classes a night. You want to stretch with the kids and the adults. Stuff. You want to stretch too much because you're going to become over loose and then you're going to hurt yeah. yourself. Especially someone like me that I can do a split. So every class wants to see since they want to do the splits. Since they want to teach the splits again. <laughs> so every class wants to even do the splits. They want to see me do a high kick. The next thing I know, I pull something or something pop and I'm like, oh no, I'm out. <laughs> I'm on the floor. <laughs> but as we, as I'm getting older and then with injuries and stuff, especially my knee thing right now, like I've been stretching more after class or even like in between rounds, I've been like stretching things out, keeping them like not as tight. And that's just going to be more important. So I'm trying out yoga. I hate yoga, but. Oh, um, no, yoga. It's just you got to do the right yoga positions. You got to find the fun, good ones. So, like yeah. I, yoga, I know sensei, it's crazy. Since Juan does yoga, I know it's nuts. I don't look like a yoga guy, but I am. <laughs> so when people think about yoga uh, or go out and look for yoga stuff, it's always this style. Just just like jujitsu, there's many schools of it, right? Yoga, has, mm-hmm. there's many schools and styles too. Like there's one called vinyasa flow that's like what you see in most commercial yoga places and stuff online. My sister actually teaches and learns. Um, she actually like had to go to India or some, she had to go somewhere to find like a really rare teacher for, to learn it and be certified to teach. But she teaches a style called Iyengar, mm-hmm. which has a lot more power based movements. So they're not as a, uh, um, cause the commercial gyms do like the flow. So it's a lot of, positions that flip, move from one position to another really fast. Um, mm-hmm. But this one is just like you hold these like strong positions. So I like that style better, but mm-hmm. um, otherwise for most people out there, if you're interested in not interested in looking for a going out and do and just doing it at home, there's actually a website called yoga for BJJ that a okay. lot of people in the BJJ community use. It's a subscription model, but they mm-hmm. like have that. Um, Otherwise, another thing that I've been using is I bought Grappler's Guide. I think I mentioned it a few episodes ago. It's like this thing you pay once in a lifetime and they keep adding like grappling videos to it. Mm-hmm. And one of the sections they have is like uh, stretching, like yoga. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing that and it's, it's helped a lot. So mm-hmm. especially my back. And I don't <laughs> think feel my back tight anymore, but. Oh, yeah. It's funny you mentioned the BJJ yoga thing because I've talked about it before also how, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan, I'm a wrestling mark and stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you want to look it up, uh, famous pro wrestler, Diamond Dallas Page, created with his own yoga, his own yoga style. And they called it when he first came out with it. And it's actually, if you look at the very old, I told you before, I think, um, if you look at the old, old infomercial, if you can find it, he does this infomercial for, uh, what was it? What did he originally call it? Yoga for real guys. YRG mm-hmm. did the infomercial. I was there. I actually filmed in that. I was actually in that infomercial way in the back. You'll see Juan doing these positions and stuff, but it's worth thinking because he developed it for pro wrestlers. Since a lot of pro wrestlers have neck problems, back mm-hmm. issues and stuff to help stretch out the back, stretch out the neck, build the muscles there again. So you can do things. And now he changed it to a DDP yoga now. And that's actually what I do. I do a mixture of DDP yoga and, um, I can't remember what it's called, like intense yoga or something mm-hmm. like that, where you hold you hold positions for, like I said, a longer yep. longer time than stuff. And you go just one, two, threes in these certain positions. And for me, that's helped me a lot with my back and neck, with my issues, helping mm-hmm. I stretch it out and strengthen it. So yoga is like it's an it's a really good tool to use for recovery, you know, yep. stretch out your muscles and stuff. Cause just doing the splits and putting your arm across your body here and doing like these stretches, that's good for warmth and stuff, but it's not really. I don't feel like it's like building the muscle where yep. yoga helps 
build the muscle while you're stretching it out. It's a different type of, it's a different thing. It's, yep. it's alchemy. It's, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to ask you is like, you probably have more experience with me than this, but massages, what do you think about that? Like how, how often do you, do, you do I know you get, sometimes you get them, but do you think, think they're helpful? Yeah. Like, um, for certain things I do because my muscles that are most messed up with me mm -hmm. is my back mostly. And I can't massage my own back <laughs> yeah. and um, it's hard to get a good massage. So what I do is since I live here in LA, I live in Koreatown. So I'm giving a little information here. Mm -hmm. I go to like the Korean spas I the Korean spas. I'll do saunas. I'll do um, ice baths or cold. Uh, some of them have ice baths. Some of them just have cold. We should go together sometime. No, Anthony, I do not want to see you naked. <laughs> Wait, is it naked? Is it supposed to be naked only? <laughs> yeah, I go there. I go the really Korean. I thought you Korean wear. I thought you wear the swimsuits. I like guess not. No, I go to the Korean Korean ones. Sushi rolls all over the place. <laughs> I went to. I went to when I went to Japan with Richard. We we were in the fast naked. That's how it is yeah. over there. So. Yeah, I know. I know how to. It's actually a funny joke that when I go to my in-laws, I don't want them looking at my sushi roll or go to on, <laughs> go to onsen or something. <laughs> but that's a separate story for another day. So. What I like to do, this is like when I pamper myself, what I'll do is that <laughs> I go to a Japanese spa. I'll do like an hour or Korean. about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> what? You said <laughs> hour Japanese. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. I go to Korean spas. I do, I do saunas. I do dry sauna. I do wet sauna. I do eye fast in between there to relax my muscles. And then I'll get a one hour massage. And mm -hmm. I really have to find out when that happens, that it really loosens up my neck, loosens my back. I'll get these kinks out. If I can't afford that, there's another place I go here in Koreatown that gives um, early morning discounts. You get a, it's a one hour, uh, $45 um, full body massage. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a good deal. They always uh, give me a, just relax me, just massage me out. But I always get this lady that always says, Oh, you work out too much. You are too stiff. You're too <laughs> stiff. It's just like, she's like, just grinding her elbow into me. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, I tap. I give up. This feels too good. <laughs> it hurts. So when I first started judo in Austin, um, mm -hmm. I got a landing on my shoulder one time and it, um, this was when I was a white belt. I didn't, my ukemi was trash. And my, it just like tightened my neck was again, neck pain on this side the whole time. So I went to get a massage and it actually made it worse. Did it? So, it did. Well, like, see, that's the thing. It depends to where you go and what they do. And you have to, as again, like I talking to your sense in judo, you have to tell the person what you want, what's hurting yeah. you. Like I always tell them what part of my neck hurts the most and they work on it. And if I feel it's too much pain and too much pressure, I'll tell them, but I like getting a hard massage. That's what I so, like. Yeah. Cause I, figure cause I got out. a deep, I got a deep tissue massage. So it, was, yeah. it felt good at the time, but then, afterwards like it actually locked up even tighter like i don't mm. know how it works but um <laughs> you come back you're defective my shoulders I, I, I know there's like different kinds of massage there's like deep tissue there's swedish mm. massage there's japanese shiatsu there's yeah. like other there's like another one out there i don't know what it is but i don't know what what it's like and i'm concerned i've been still trying different places out and different styles out but i, I might find a sport specific massage place next time and test it because that's one thing i haven't tried i've just been going to places like you have and yeah. saying like my neck hurts my this hurts and have them do it but i might go to a sports therapy specific massage well, you place. could go if you want to experiment go to the same place and ask for a deep tissue then ask for a swedish then ask mm -hmm. for um shiatsu and see which one helps you out the best which one you feel loosens you up pops yeah. your joints and stuff how it fixes it <laughs> And that's another thing, actually, we didn't talk about. What do you think about like chiropractic? Because I, I was I, actually thinking about that. You, you want to talk about that one next? Because yeah. I every oh now gosh. and then, because they're expensive. I would love to go to a chiropractor once a week because of certain things in my body that need to be popped and adjusted and fixed so, and stuff. But they're expensive. When <laughs> I used when I lived in LA before I moved away, uh, mm. this is like 15, 16, 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um my aunt introduced me and my parents to a chiropractor in Manhattan beach. I'm mm -hmm. not going to, I'm not going to name him. He's not in Manhattan beach anymore. Anyway, he moved, mm -hmm. but, um, he was a chiropractor and. Okay. Let me, let me, he messed you up. Let, let me go back. I'm trying, was we're going to get, experience? I'm going to get like more hate mail now, but <laughs> we're getting a lot of heat. Let's, let's of heat go, today. let's go back to what I said about dietitians. 
Same uh, thing about chiropractors. <laughs> they are not doctors. They have their own organization that they certify people and then they call them doctors. But again, they're not certified doctors and it's not well regulated. And mm -hmm. you know, those adjustments that you see them do like with the neck and stuff, that's yeah. really dangerous. I, I used to get that done because I was a kid and I just like went there and was like, wherever. Right. And mm -hmm. it also actually, um, I wouldn't say it felt good, but when it cracked, when it popped my neck, it feel, you feel, it's kind of like cracking your knuckles. You feel a release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about it. But then I started reading it up later. It's actually really dangerous to do that. And you're not supposed to do that. Not like they do it. Um, mm -hmm. With that said, in other countries, chiropractors actually are doc, like kind of spine doctors, basically. But mm -hmm. in America, it's not. And they are, they're, chiropractors are good for certain things. But then the problem is in here in America, they go on to like add all these like bullshit claims into it. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, I've seen one that was selling energy stones, like chakra or something. Oh my God, get the F out of here. Oh, and then shit. there's like, they go into like essential oils and all that kind of stuff, right? So there, uh, there are places like that. That's one example. But I'll tell you what my place was doing that I think is completely bullshit, right? So mm -hmm. he took an extra of me and I've known this since I was a kid. My, my spine is actually curved like this way. So mm -hmm. my, one of my shoulders is actually lower than the other. And, um, he told me, Oh, we need to get this fixed or it's going to develop into scoliosis or something. And mm -hmm. like, it scared my parents so much that they took me to this chiropractor and he actually started doing adjustments to me to fix my spine. And mm -hmm. long story short, it never, ever straightened my spine. It's not, it's not possible without a surgery of like basically breaking your spine apart and, and <laughs> putting, nailing it back together. It's not possible. So he would do what these adjustments. Hang you from a tree. What if you hang from a tree feet it, first? If that if, that you drain yeah, <laughs> doesn't work. I've I've looked into it. Doesn't work. So, um, well, before I go on talking about this doctor, um, I went to see a specialist many years later, and he mm -hmm. told me to bend over, like touch my toes, and he said your spine is straight when you bend over. It's just when you stand up, it's bent. And he was like, it's not a problem as long as it doesn't get worse. Then it's not a problem. And actually, when I started lifting weights, it helped um, the muscle, my back muscles help solidify my spine. So yeah. yeah, it hasn't gotten worse all these years. And it's just whenever people are always saying, why are my shoulders like this when they kind of really pay attention, mm -hmm. but it's really, it has an effect on my life. But back to the chiropractor, uh -huh. he basically claimed that one of my feet was shorter than the other or tall, longer than the other, which is causing this shoulder thing. So was he going to do pop your foot out more? No, he was like doing a neck massage thing here. And he claims that he can like adjust the, the length of my freaking legs to even it out. And then he would told no. my parents like, come over here. Look, look, I just adjusted it. Like, look how feet is like. I so, don't mean to be mean or nothing, <laughs> but was this chiropractor Chinese also? No, he's white. Ah, damn it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It blows my cover right there. He's as white as it comes, but um, as white as it gets. <laughs> Yeah. So I, like I said, I don't, I don't exactly know what uh, chiropractors are certified or knowledgeable to do, but it's definitely mm -hmm. none of the adjustment kind of crap that they do. Yeah. Basically. I will only go, I've only gone to a chiropractor maybe a handful of times and that was when my neck was really bad. And I was like, maybe the chiropractor, like pop it, pull it, help out my vertebrae, just extend them or something. It's dang, like and, going back to say it, yeah. you, you feel release, but it's dangerous. Like I was reading the other day, this girl, got in mm -hmm. she, she was getting like a soreness so she from like workout or something so she went to get mm -hmm. a chiropractor adjustment and they did that thing to her neck mm -hmm. and what ended up happening was she went back and she had like a headache and then she died because basically that adjustment like uh, -huh. uh they, in the autopsy they found that her um this like vital artery got got broken when she when they did that adjustment the the bone basically broke that artery severed and she it. got, yeah. yeah, severed it. And she got a stroke and died basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's more of, like I said, that's why I'm more of a massage guy. And like, I really, yeah. like, I'm just saying now, I've been craving massage for the longest time because I didn't get, was able to get one during yeah. the entire pandemic. I've been just like 
what I do because I have like neck and back mm-hmm. issues and my tensity, my back. I, I roll my back out all the time. You see me at the dojo, I'll hang like a freaking vampire because I'm just trying to like lengthen yep. it or I'll hang from my arms sometimes. Just, I do all these things, but I've been really, really wanting to massage lately. Really. Just haven't had the yeah. time or find my place to be open. They did reopen. They did finally reopen. Yeah. And I know that's another thing because of the pandemic. I know one, oh, one such big baby. I haven't gone back to the Korean spas in over yeah. probably two years now, probably. <laughs> because of health reasons and stuff like that and yeah yeah it's a sad thing about here in los angeles especially where i live um koreatown has a lot of homeless people we have a big homeless problem mm-hmm. here in los angeles and one of the places where they can shower get cleaned up use restroom is that they'll pay the money to go to a korean spa shower up and clean up and stuff so that's i'm not saying they all have covid or something i'm just trying because my job i have to be very safe and protect myself because i get tested Mm-hmm. every time i work and people don't understand that i get tested literally like this past week i had tested three times this week already yep so like i said i've really been craving a massage just haven't gotten one lately yeah most of the stuff that a relief that i see people say that the chiropracticism can be accomplished with a massage i mean yeah. most chiropractic places give you massages too basically because yeah. that and when i was a kid I, I liked going there because essentially he after the adjustments he did he would give me a massage and that's what I actually liked. And that's what I kept, what most people kept coming back for. It's not for the adjustments. <laughs> and yeah, the adjustment thing is just scary. And think about it. That I actually even did that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, doing it at such a young age, like I would never have a child go to a chiropractor, yeah. like, even a teenager. I wouldn't have go to a chiropractor. Yeah, mom. You're still developing. You're still <laughs> 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 well, my, <laughs> I don't you to get me in trouble. I see your mom is going to attack with a purse or she's Chinese. So she might attack with a broom, actually. <laughs> another duster. <laughs> Um, in my personal opinion, I would never have a child, a teenager. They're still developing. They're still growing, getting a massage. Same thing like they tell children, teenagers, don't start lifting weights until you're, I think 15 nowadays is the number they say 14 mm-hmm. or 15 to start lifting weights yep. and you don't lift heavy to your tar- to your 16. And that's another thing about weight training and fitness training for judo, but back to the topic at hand. So Anthony, out of all these programs you've done and you tried and you built your own, which one do you feel works the best for judo? Honestly, if you don't have that much time and you haven't done anything before, I would pick starting strength. Starting it's the lowest, it was, it's the lowest amount of commitment commitment. It's not mentally difficult like Tabata because mm-hmm. Tabata, most people aren't, aren't it's kind of like a diet, right? Diet only works as well. If you can keep that habit up, right? It's habitual mm-hmm. changes. It, don't go on like a fad diet. You want habitual changes, right? Mm-hmm. Starting strength was easy to build like a routine up and, keep at it but tabata is really hard mentally for people who are beginners or recreational people to keep up with so starting strength is good to keep up with and it's good supplemental training if you don't get bored with it like Mm -hmm. even right now i'm doing some variation of it because i can't run and do the tactical barbell stuff so Mm -hmm. i'm just doing some variation of starting strength with rings with the gymnastic rings in your back in your background right now um see these ones right here when you have the video you gotta watch this yeah i do i do a mixture of pull-ups with those rings and uh dips and also with starting strength uh workout so i think that's for majority of people that would be enough now if Mm -hmm. you're more competitive than there are other stuff that like it's more probably out out of my expertise but (laughs) but if you have if you want to get more out of it try out Again, try out all these different things. I'm just sharing my experience with it and the research that I've done and the science behind it that mm-hmm. I've seen and see what works for you. Because in the end, not everyone works from home like I do. You know, like one thing that I would like to do better right now is swim. But then my gym is like not the YMCA I go to, the hours don't match my working hours. They're, they close early. And then you need to sign up ahead of time to, because of COVID, you have to sign up yeah, ahead of time COVID, to reserve, yeah. reserve a swim lane. So I can't mm-hmm. do that. So I, there's no use in adding that to my routine when it doesn't work. So if starting strength doesn't work for you, then try this stuff, try this out. But there's other stuff out there you can try. But mm-hmm. um, Otherwise, body people are always like, I need a gym. I need this to work out. It's like bullshit. You can do body weight. Can't doing push ups, body squats, wall sits, L sits, like all that kind of stuff does not require any equipment. And you can do it at home and it still benefits your uh, judo. And the worst comes oh, yeah. to worse, jump roping. You don't have a jump rope, just jump, jump in place for like three minutes for five <laughs> rounds, you know? Just move your hands in a circle and just jump around. That's all you yeah, can do. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing as jump roping, essentially. Mm-hmm. 
you're not training the wrist muscles in a coordination, but um, it's the same exact thing cardio wise. Mm-hmm. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about this topic or no, fitness training? I think that was just me blabbing for like an hour. So. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good information. You know, we train different ways. I'm very old school yeah. way of training. Like I, I try to be open-minded and do these new things, but I kind of just, you just back go, I just go back to my old things of like training hard. I got to train for an hour. I got to train for two hours. I got to be sore. I got to be hard. You know, I know the science is there and I've tried to evolve myself in doing these things, but you being younger than I am, you know, a yeah. little younger than I am. Adjust it. Yeah. I have to just think, and it, it's just about keeping an open mind. And I, and I try to, but sometimes it's like we talk about, you gotta be sore sometimes. Yeah. Ah, I don't feel like I'm not sore. That I don't feel like I got a good workout, yeah. but you don't need it. And the whole thing is like these new, uh, four minute, five minute workouts. Mm-hmm. just like, and I'm like, I'm very, um, like I have a, a whole thing where like, okay, I, I work out, take a shower, do this, do that. So I have to like plan out the time. And yeah. if five minutes, if I could really get a good workout in five minutes, it saves me so much more time. Yeah. But mentally I have to get over that hurdle of five minutes is enough one, five minutes is enough. Cause I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to get to that five minute mark and be like, that's my if problem five minutes too, good, getting, yeah. 10 minutes must be amazing. <laughs> and that's 10 minutes is amazing. Hurdle. That's yeah. the mental hurdle. And 10 hurdle. minutes is amazing. 30 must be like a <laughs> God. <laughs> That's just something you, it, it, you, it's just weird how our human brains work. Right. And you just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a so. boxing exercise I used to do when I was in MMA fighting and training at the boxing gym where I would just hit the double end bag, just with a jab, 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 switch my sides. And when you do it for a long time, it's a big, it's, it's a surprising cardio workout. So I'm just dripping sweat. And after a while, my coach is like, Juan, you're done. I'm like, what? I, I'm not done yet. I, I still go. He's like, no, Juan, you're not sweating anymore. You're not sweating. If you're not sweating, you're not working out anymore. It's like, am I? Oh shit, the pool's gone. I'm, not, I'm like, oh yeah. man, I'm not sweating anymore. So yeah, it's just these mental things. Like you work what you need to, and you don't have to go more than that. So on my tactical barbell schedule, the heavy bag work is actually on one of the days because it counts yeah. as cardio. Yeah. Mm, oh, it is. It's, yeah. it's great cardio, especially a double end bag. Well, for me, yeah. I like doing double end bag. I tend, if I get, a, if I get a full <laughs> heavy bag, I tend to go a little too hard on, the, on a full heavy bag. <laughs> I broke the heavy bag at the YMCA in Austin. But and then you run away like, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> no, I, to be honest, I think it was on his last legs anyway. So the <laughs> last kick I did was just like the the feeling just went everywhere. But yeah. it's just like a martial art movie. You're like, oh, yeah. I did it. <laughs> I gotta get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> All right. So if that's it, then let's just sign out. Then after that, is that yep. good? You're good. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you guys got something out of this. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on YouTube at the Tommy Talk. You can follow us on Instagram at the Tommy Talk. You can follow Anthony Anthony Throws on at <laughs> you follow Anthony Anthony Throws on Instagram. You can follow me at the Jerry underscore one. If you want to send us any emails or send us any messages, any questions you guys have, you know, send that to us at the Tommy Talk at gmail.com. Anthony, am I forgetting anything? No, we're good. Nah, that's good. All right. Yep. Till next time. All right. See ya.